guys, what's up? It's me, your girl, Alisa from StylishCurts.com, and today I'm back with a new video. So today's video is going to be a huge departure from my normal fashion and beauty videos. Today I'm going to be opening up to you guys and sharing my story on how I was able to quit my job, my full-time corporate America job, and become my own girl boss. I wanted to do this video two years ago, but I have to keep it real with you guys. I was afraid to do the video because I was afraid of failure. I was just like, I don't want to do this video telling them, you know, how I quit my job, I'm my own boss, and then next thing you know, I'm right back where I was in corporate America doing stuff that I didn't want to do or I wasn't interested in. And so I was just really afraid, afraid of failing when I first quit. Um, but I am no longer afraid. It's been two years and I'm very happy and very proud of that. And so I just wanted to do a video sharing with you my journey, sharing with you things I've learned so far and being my own boss for the past two years. And I'm hoping that those of you who are watching may be inspired by my journey and my story so i definitely just wanted to do this video for that reason so if you guys are interested in checking out how i was able to quit my job and become a full-time entrepreneur my own girl boss then you guys already know what to do and that is to keep on watching all right guys so i figured the best place to start is right after college for me. So um, I went to school at Nyack College, upstate New York, well, kind of sort of upstate New York. Um, and I got a bachelor's of science degree in communication and I minored in journalism. So I've always wanted to be a journalist. I always wanted to be a writer. Those were things that I honestly just knew from elementary school that I wanted to do. And so that's why I decided to pursue a degree in them. When I was in college, uh, I did a couple internships and I wrote for the school newspaper. So I felt like I was doing all the right things for me to get a full-time job, whether that was gonna be at a TV network, a news network, or at a magazine. So when it came time to graduate from college and find a job, that proved to be very difficult. Uh, I applied for you know jobs at magazines, TV networks, news networks. Um, I tried as hard as I could and I couldn't get a call back. I couldn't get an interview. And so I kind of basically, the short version, I pretty much kind of gave up on that dream a little bit. And so um, I found myself working, you know, retail, which I actually liked. I worked quite a few retail jobs in college as well as after college. I I worked for Lord & Taylor as a sales associate, I worked for Nine West, Arrow Pastel, you know like most teenagers or most you know um, young adults that's what you do you know to have money in your pocket but for me I actually enjoyed working retail, I enjoyed helping customers and I enjoyed like helping them create outfits, I enjoyed you know paying attention to you know what item is selling a lot what items are not like that i actually enjoyed i did not enjoy standing on my feet for four to eight hours a day <laughs> but i definitely did enjoy that so after college when i was trying to find a job at a magazine or at a network i was unable to find one and so basically i took the first full-time job that was paying a decent salary at that time because this was like back in 2003. I just took the first job which happened to be educational sales and it was for my college. I was like a recruiter for people who wanted to continue their education so it was like for an adult degree program. Uh, so I did that for about a full year. So then after that I uh, wound up uh finding another educational job and i worked for this place called score educational center for kids i did that job for about a year it was okay it wasn't something that i was interested in and so i decided to leave that job and find a new one and at this time it was just like i just l literally was just getting jobs I so i had one on craigslist and i went to look for another job i went and looked for administrative uh, positions and I happened to find one on Craigslist 
went in for an interview, found out that it was a hedge fund and that they were just looking for um, an administrative assistant to kind of help take over duties from the person that they had there because that person was moving on. So I go in, do the interview like the guys that I did the interview with and they basically explained to me like we're an investment firm, we're part you know hedge fund and then we're part real estate. So interview, everything worked out well. Literally a couple of weeks later they call me back and they go you know we like you and I wound up getting hired. So this was like back in 2005. So I get hired and it was a it was a very small company like literally there were three people I was number four. <laughs> I started there, I was so amazed at just what they did. I was amazed at how a hedge fund works and how the market works. So when I got that job, I was just so amazed at everything that was going on there. Um, the real estate side of the company, they had just, they were building this new property. They had all of these luxury apartments and, you know, I was going, seeing these, you know, 2.5 million dollar apartments in New York City and I was really excited about the job because they were doing just things that I've never done before so I would say probably my first three years there I loved it I, I love my bosses they were not the kind of bosses that micromanaged your time they were family men they were respectful they were understanding like I really liked the job that I had. So I was loving it after three years. I was even thinking about pursuing a career in real estate. I was like, oh, I might as well become a stockbroker. But in my heart of hearts, I knew, okay, you are not interested in this, but it still was exciting to do. So fast forward to probably a good five years of me being into the job at the hedge fund. I started becoming bored. I started feeling like this is not what I want to do with my life. I felt like my passion for writing and being a journalist and just fashion, like I felt like all of those feelings started to come up again because I felt like they were suppressed because I was in a new industry and I liked the things that I was experiencing at the time. And so Again, five years in, all of that started to fade away. I, I don't want to do this anymore, but I didn't know what else to do. So fast forward to 2009. So I happened to be watching an Oprah show. As I feel like most people in their aha moments <laughs> are always with Oprah. So I happened to be watching an Oprah show and she had this mommy blogger on there. I cannot remember who the mommy blogger was, but basically this mommy blogger was talking to Oprah and telling her about her journey to becoming a blogger. She basically was on and she was talking about how she became a mommy blogger. So she was saying after she had children, she thought that she was going to feel this close knit feeling with her baby and she just didn't. And so she used to write journals or something like that. And she used to share them with her friends and they would wound up, share, wound up sharing her stories with their friends and their family. And so she had wound up starting a blog and she was saying like after a year or a couple years well maybe i think like after a year or two years she had uh started making money from her blogs through advertising and she was saying how you know she was working full time and she wound up in blog advertising money making her same salary and more from her blog I happened to see that and for some reason that struck something in me. I go and research what blogs were, what's a blogger, and saw this whole world, <laughs> this whole online world of blogs that I'm just like, how did I not know about this? So when I saw her story, her story is honestly what inspired and prompted me to become a blogger. So after I like researched what a blogger was and all that kind of stuff, I was just like, well, what could I blog about? You know, like, what would I want to write about? Because one, I like to write. Two, I was just like, what, what could it, what could I write about? And it just came to me at that time, like, you know what, you could write about fashion. And not just, you know, fashion for everyone, but I was like, you could write about plus size fashion. And the only reason I thought about plus size fashion was because obviously at that time too, I was a plus size girl. So 
I would always get stopped on the street and people would be like, oh my gosh, you look so nice. You dress so nice. Where did you get that from? And I would get that from all size women. It wouldn't just be plus size women. I would get stopped by somebody that looked like they were size four and six and be like, oh my gosh, your dress is so pretty or your skirt is so nice. Where did you get this? Or you look so put together. So I used to always get that. I knew that I always wanted to write at a magazine. So I was like, well, maybe in a blog, I can combine the two. So I decided to create a plus size fashion blog, but I wanted to do it from a shopping perspective. Now, remember, I told you guys Guys, I worked a lot of retail jobs so I always knew like what items were selling I always work with different kind of customers so I knew that I could write about fashion from a plus size perspective one and two from a shoppers perspective and then three knowing that there wasn't a lot of places for plus size women to shop I always felt like I was a savvy shopper because I was on the smaller spectrum of smaller spectrum of plus. I was able to shop in both plus size stores and non plus size stores. And like I said, I became obsessed with magazines, you know, right before I went into college. So I was already, when I was reading those magazines, I was already training myself on designers, you know, looking at different styles and knowing like, oh, Gucci probably designed that. And I would kind of like test myself like that sometimes and I would read like a new issue. And before I would look at the name, I would try to guess what designer it was. Um, so in a sense, I think about it this way now. I didn't think about it that way before. I almost felt like those experiences were training me for now but I didn't feel that way at the time. And so I had to come up with the name. I was researching like, what could I call myself? I came up with Stylish Curves. So I came up with that name and no one had it, uh, at least on Blogspot. I was able to get a website with it and everything. And so pretty much that is how Stylish Curves was born. So I have been blogging for about a full year under stylish curves and you know I'm still blogging to instead of seven people now I'm blogging to like 30 people <laughs> and I loved every minute of it when I started blogging I was in love with blogging I would be up at three four o'clock in the morning to blog before work I would many a times <laughs> blog during my lunch break at work I was so obsessed with it. I was obsessed with sharing, you know, where to find, you know, bras for big breasts or, you know, where to find really cute jeans that didn't, you know, fit all, you know, frumpy. Um, I was so obsessed with it that there were times that I was at work, I wouldn't even realize like, you know you have like 20 work emails you need to answer right now because I was so busy trying to create the next blog post. Um, and then I wound up working uh, as a contributor for uh, the Budget Fashionista. So shout out to Catherine Finney. Catherine showed me the game of blogging. She showed me you know how to create good content she taught me how important good content is and how that is basically the backbone of any blog after about a good year and working for Catherine Finney for the budget fashionista I started actually networking with other bloggers and I just was remembering back to when I first saw that Oprah show like back in 2009 and two years a year to two later I'm like, oh shoot, I'm a legit blogger. And so I knew that I wanted to do this full time. I, seeing that mommy blogger share her story truly struck a chord in me and inspired me to start blogging. And as I blogged, I started treating my blog as if it was my own personal magazine. I was creating my own content. Um, I would literally be up, be out shopping in stores. I don't know, for those of you who've been following me since 2009, I used to do this uh, feature called um, lunch break shopping where I would be like in Lord and Taylor, Macy's trying on stuff like you guys should get this and this is how it looked. Like I was just so infatuated with blogging. Like I literally just was 
it, it just took over me and like I said I was up to three and four o'clock in the morning trying to get a jump start and stuff still knowing I didn't have a lot of readers but that didn't matter to me I just knew that I was create like I was like oh shoot this is like my own magazine so after blogging for about a full three to maybe four years I just would not have imagined all of the stuff that has happened to me as a blogger all of the amazing experiences back in like 2012 I did a segment for Good Morning America two segments actually I did one with um I did one about Zara this was years ago when Zara was like they would never make clothes for bigger women um, and I was invited to come on you know Good Morning America and do like a special piece about that and then the following year they had asked me back again for a second time to talk about mainstream designers who uh, actually had plus size collections like Michael Kors, Calvin Klein, uh, designers like that and then I was able to actually go on again you know talk about what I knew and you know model clothes and I would have never imagined me starting my blog in 2009 at to that time 2012 that I would be on national TV talking to women or sharing my experience with women when it comes to you know fashion and style I would have never imagined that and like that's for me that those were those those two moments for me were like the biggest moments in my blogging career I guess you can say so after like maybe a good three to four years into blogging I started realizing that this could actually be a viable source of income for me. Getting paid to be part of campaigns and I just never would imagine that I really wanted to be a fashion editor and it just didn't happen the way I imagined it would happen and I would have never ever in my wildest dreams imagined that it would have happened this way through blogging and so I was just like this could be something that I could create a career out of and I there's so many things that I want to do in life and so blogging is just one of them and I feel like that was that it is rather a stepping stone for me to do other things that I have planned to do. I would have never imagined being part of a campaign with Ashley Stewart. I would have never imagined being a brand ambassador for, um, you know, a Chanel. national company like, you know, Fruit of the Loom. I would have never imagined all the things that I've done throughout my career as a blogger. I would have never imagined any of those things. Around 2013 to 14, I started realizing that I was making a substantial amount from blogging and I started realizing that it was almost in a sense matching what I was making you know full time at this hedge fund and like I said I was just you know just starting to become unhappy at the hedge fund and as it's like my blogging career was just getting better and better but working at the hedge fund for me was just like you know what I'm no longer interested and then one day at a meeting with my boss and it was like one of those year of the end the end of the year meetings you know and they were basically like we're a small firm we know that you want to do more here but there and in but so many words they were like there is no room for growth like <laughs> you like I went from an administrative assistant to an office manager at the hedge fund and again we were such a small hedge fund literally like a company of four to five people that my experience wasn't just as you know an office manager it was literally I was able to see the inner workings of how a hedge fund worked like um, I was doing so many things you know dealing with the hedge fund and like I said they also did real estate that I was so much more than than the title that I had and although those things were interesting and fun for a time I just knew that it's, I just was over it and so the moment that my boss was just like basically we had there's no more room for growth here like we love you we want you to stay here if you want to but we understand if you don't and if you want to do something else because they also knew that I was blogging so 
I was able to juggle both. Um, so basically, they were just like, we want you to stay, but you know, if you want to do something else, you can. The day they told me that, I just knew like, okay, God, is it time to move on? Like, I just felt like God was just moving around things and do and and doing things to let me know like this here is over for you it's time for you to move on into you know blogging full time so it was probably 2014 um when 2014 came around i was completely unhappy at work uh, and this was a year after they had told me like there was no more room for growth. I was just unhappy like I dreaded coming to work and again this was a place I used to love coming to work. Um, I love the people there but it just was just like I'm over this. Like I would look out the w office window and I would be like please help me take me away. Like I just knew like this is not for me but I didn't know where to go and even though I was having success with my blog it still sounded odd that like, could I really be a full-time blogger? I knew of bloggers who did it full-time. I just didn't know like, okay, could I really do this? And how would this sound to my family if I was gonna say, listen, I'm leaving my secure, good paying job <laughs> to go be a blogger. And um, what I did was, like I said, I try my best to make calculated decisions. I try to, wait things out and you know really take my time and weigh pros and cons of a decision that I'm going to make that will basically change my life and so what I did was I started keeping a spreadsheet of all the money that I was making from blogging um I started tracking where the money was coming from um how on average how much money I was making a month outside of like my regular paycheck and then a second thing happened so remember I told you my my bosses were basically like there's no room for growth you could stay here but basically you need to know like you're not gonna go from here this this is it so this is 2014 at the end of the year um, we were having our you know office holiday dinner I mean holiday lunch rather so we went out to this restaurant and then my boss just randomly asked me he was like hey um he was like do you make money from blogging and I was just like yeah and then he was just like how do you I think he said something like how do you measure that like how do you like make money from it and I was getting ready to tell him and then like the check came so we never got to finish that conversation but I always felt that it was odd that he would ask me that I'm like why is he asking me you know about my blog like it just kind of it threw me off and like why are you asking if I'm making money so um, I'm, and I have a reason, we're gonna go back to that, but he asked me that. At, at the beginning of 2015, I went to talk to bloggers who I knew had taken the plunge of becoming full-time bloggers within like the, the last year or two. I spoke to them to kind of just, you know, get some sort of idea of what could I expect as a full-time blogger and they all took their time, gave me amazing advice, real deal advice, none of the, you know, fluffy stuff. They didn't just tell me all of the great things, but they also told me some of the challenges, which I truly appreciated that. I thought about all the things that I wanted to do. I thought about how I've created this platform where I have hundreds of thousands of people who read my site or who follow me on social media collectively. And I just said, you know, I have a platform and I have this platform where I can do other things that I want to do. Um, I don't have to just be a full-time blogger. Like, I can do other things in addition to it. So, and when I looked at that revenue sheet I had, I thought about what my boss had asked me at the holiday lunch we had. And I was just like, you know what? I think it's I think it's time I think it's time so I prayed about it I already had money saved up and I was just like I'm gonna do it so I drafted my letter at work did not give the letter in I had the letter drafted so now we're into 2015 so I had the letter drafted from like February or March and I was just like I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna do it 
then I was like, you know what? Nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you know, and I'm a mom, so I'm just like, you know, I have so many responsibilities. I was just so afraid. And then I just swear something in my spirit was just like, it's time. You can go ahead and do this. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, so I believe that was the Holy Spirit speaking to me and telling me like, go ahead. This is, this is right. What you're, what you're thinking is what you should be doing. And so, and so like a few months passed and like right around August, no, right around July, actually the beginning of July, I took out the letter cause I had put it in my, um, my desk drawer. I've had it there for months and I asked my bosses if they could just meet with me and I gave them my letter. So I gave them like a full month's notice. So after I gave them my letter, I thought that they were gonna hire somebody else. And at that, for my month staying there before I left, they didn't interview with anyone. They didn't hire anyone else. And and I always thought that was strange and odd. And then I asked my boss one day and he was just like, well, we wanna take our time and hire someone. After I left, I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck am I gonna do? I can't mess this up. So after I left, you know, I already had campaigns going on, sponsored stuff. Like I was already in full work mode. So I had work to do to, you know, keep me busy. Not keep me busy, but I had work to do to just jump right into being, you know, a full time entrepreneur at this point. Cause that's what I am. <laughs> and so after like maybe a couple months into it, I get a email from one of my bosses and he's like, and this was around Christmas time. He was like, hey, you have a package here. You might want to come get it because, you know, we're moving. And I was like, oh, okay, sure, no problem. I'll, you know, be there such and such day. So I'm like, they're moving? Like, why are they moving? And then I thought maybe they're moving to a smaller office because again, we were a small firm. So we went from, four people to three at this point so i was just like so maybe they're just probably moving to a small office so i can't make this up i can't like what i'm about to say i just knew that god was with me and ordering my steps from 2005 till now so i get there and they're all packed up and i'm like where are you guys moving to and he was like, oh, well, we're shutting down the company. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, what do you mean you're shutting down the company? Like, and he was just like, well, we're closing down the offices. I'm going, because I had two bosses, one for the hedge fund, one for real estate. He was like, I'm going to work from home for real estate. And my other boss, he happened to be on vacation the day I came in. And he's going to work from home for the hedge fund stuff. So basically... They were like, we gave the investors back all their money and we're going to basically do our own separate thing. When I said my mouth was like, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. I would have never imagined that they would, they didn't say they dissolved the company, but I'm assuming once you give investors back all their money and y'all going in separate ways, that means this is done um for the time being so i could not have imagined that and so remember when i said my boss had asked me like you know how do i make money from blogging and then remember when i said you know they basically brought me in and was like there's no room for growth i almost feel like what i obviously wouldn't have known it but they were already i feel like they were already planning to shut down the company or close the business and even though I didn't know it, either to me, God knew it and he worked it out. And for me, that moment when he said, like, we closed the business, that to me justified and made me confident in the decision of leaving and pursuing this entrepreneur life full time. I could not have thought or imagined that they were going to close that business after I left. And the other guy that I worked with, the third person who was there, he left and he went to pursue his own stuff. And that's when I knew it was real. It's not like they closed the business down and they're taking him, taking the other guy with them to do, to do a whole nother business. Like everyone went their own separate ways. And I just could not have imagined that. And so since 2015, 
It's now 2017 by the grace of God, by prayers, by love and support from family and friends. I have been my own boss for two years. I felt like I've, I lived out a dream. I did, like I started blogging because one, I couldn't find the job that I wanted, which was to be a fashion editor. Um, I wanted to do this full time and from 2009 till now, I'm living out those dreams. I'm the editor of my own site. I've gone to Fashion Week and sat front row with other f magazine editors. I'm paying my bills literally from Stylish Curve. So that for me is just a blessing and I'm appreciative for it. I just had to share my personal story with you guys because I know what it's like to, you know, be at a job and not want to be there like this is not what i want to do in my life <laughs> um and i just wanted to just let you guys know that you can pursue your dreams you might not be able to go full time like out the gate but i worked full time i was a mom i am a mom um i work full time i blog every day I, there wasn't a day i blogged on the weekends i wanted this so bad that I made it happen it was a priority for me and so I just wanted to let you guys know not to be all cheesy pursue your dreams if you're doing something that you are just not excited about anymore or you just no longer want to do it then it's time to start taking action steps to do what it is that your heart desires what it is that you're passionate about every day i wake up excited even on days when it's like rough like oh gosh you know i'm still thankful and grateful like wait a minute i'm not going to somebody else's office i'm not sitting at somebody else's desk i'm not doing something for someone else that I don't want to do. I'm truly happy and I feel blessed. We have come so far. We have writers on the site now. We're in 2009. It was just my voice, but now we have different voices. We've had other um, bloggers who used to write for us that have gone on to do other amazing things. So I'm truly thankful and blessed. And like I said, blogging is not the only thing that I will be working on. I have a couple of a pro other projects that I'm working on. I just want to thank you for listening. I know this was a super long video sorry about that <laughs> but um i hope you guys feel inspired to go after your dreams and hope you guys um feel inspired and thank you so much for just your support for those of you who support me here on youtube and those of you who have supported the blog and been rocking with us from 2009 thank you so much i truly appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next video bye